Hi guys, this is Ashish Pangani from Programming Club IIT Madras and today I'll be discussing the solution to code for this round 813. So let's begin with the first problem. Uh, so in this problem you are given a permutation P of length N and you are given a positive of integer K that is less than or equal to N and in one operation you can choose any two indices I and J and you can swap the corresponding value of I and J, P, I and P, J. And you have to find the minimum number of operations needed to make the sum of P1 up to PK as small as possible. So to achieve the minimum uh, possible sum, what you can take, what you can do is like take the K least elements in the permutation and place them uh, in the positions from uh, P1 to PK. So basically for each of the array indices from, uh, so basically for each of the array indices from 1 to K, you check if the corresponding value is greater than k then you need to swap it with some other number that is less than k so that would count so that would increment your answer by one and at the end you print your answer so that's the solution and we move on to the problem b so in problem b you are given an integer n and you have to find any permutation p of length n such that the lcm of uh, 1 comma p1 uh, plus lcm of 2 comma p2 up to LCM of n comma pn is as large as possible. So let us see like what the LCM actually is. So LCM of two numbers is act, uh, LCM of a comma b is nothing but product of a and b is product of a and b divided by GCD of a and b. Okay, GCD of a and b. So since you want to maximize the uh, sum over all the LCMs. You, what you want to have is you want to maximize each of the individual terms itself. And to maximize the LCM of a comma b, what you want to achieve is you want to achieve the minimum possible GCD of a comma b. So the minimum possible GCD of any two numbers is just one, and you can always achieve that by pairing the uh, xth number. Like GCD of x comma x minus one is always one. Uh, we know that GCD of x comma is x minus 1 is 1. So we can do this process for each of the uh, element starting from back. So what I mean by that is uh, like for uh, so for the nth position what you can do is like you can choose pn to be n minus 1. You can choose pn to be n minus 1. So they so n GC, so LCM of n comma n minus 1 would nothing uh, but would be nothing but just the product of n and n minus 1 and since you want to maximize over all these products what you will do is like you will try to pair the two maximum numbers that you have uh, right now with yourself that are not paired yet so I'll show you my code how do I implement this solution so how do I check my submissions okay Okay, uh, so I take my uh, so I take my input n and initially I assign my permutation to contain all the numbers from one to n and I start iterating my array from back and it, uh, I take the two maximum elements that I have so like since my array is sorted I have assigned the, my permutation as my identity permutation like from one to n so I start iterating from back and I swap the two largest numbers that I have right now and I decrement my counter by two the array counter by two so basically what I'm trying to achieve is that suppose uh, my array elements are one two three four and five so in this case I'm trying to pair this four with this five and this four uh, so in my uh, corresponding position for p of five I have I would have p of 5 is equal to 4 and I would have p of 4 equal to 5 so I'm trying to pair these elements up and I try to increment and I and I will decrement by counter by 2 so in the next step I'll try to pair these elements up and I repeat this process until I have uh, less than two elements uh, remaining so this is how I implement my solution like I assign all the array uh, to like I assign my array as an identity permutation and starting from back I just swap 
the two maximum numbers that I have right now and in the end I print I print my final permutation so that's the solution for problem B and now I move on to problem C so this is kind of an implementation based problem so in this problem you are given an array of n positive integers so note the term positive uh, in one operation what you can do is like you can choose any integer x and for all i such that a i is equal to x you assign a i to be 0 like uh, notice this for all i you do this so and you want to uh, find the minimum number of operations required to sort the array in non-decreasing order so let us see uh, whether we can always uh, do certain number of operations and sort the array in non-decreasing order or not so like we can always achieve a solution in which uh, we select all all the numbers that appear in my array itself and I assign all of them to be zero so that would be a non-decreasing array element in itself so for example I have this array 5 4 3 2 1 and 1 so in this case my worst case scenario is that I choose uh, I choose the x to be 1 and I assign this as 0 5 4 3 2 and 1 and in the next step I choose my x to be 5 x to be 5 and x to be 4 x to be 3 and then x equal to 2 so this will take me 5 operations to assign all the array elements to 0 and uh, an array of all 0 is a non-decreasing uh, array so my worst case answer is just the number of distinct elements that appear in the array because I can always convert all the array elements to 0 okay so uh, what else can I do like to improve my answer so uh, notice that the thing is uh, you are given an array of positive integers and for the operation you are assigning ai to be 0 so the zeros if they have to appear in the array itself and the array has to be non-decreasing then the zeros need to appear in the leftmost part of the array so your final array would some uh, would look something like this like uh, x y z p k l and m so in the your final array what you'll have is like you'll have a leftmost part containing all zeros because the zeros can appear only in the leftmost part because all the remaining entries are greater than or equal to 1 so the zeros can appear in only in the leftmost part and in the rightmost part you will actually have a non-decreasing uh, non array so this part would be non-decreasing in itself and you will have a leftmost part containing of all zeros and since you want to achieve this thing in the minimum number of operations you will try to have as less number of zeros as possible so basically what we try to do is like we try to check for each of the suffix uh, like we try to find a maximum suffix such that this part is a non-decreasing array in itself and the remaining part is uh, array of zeros but there is a catch and the catch is like if you are including an array uh, element like let's say for example if you are taking this array element p in your life in your rightmost sub part uh, that is non-decreasing then this p has to be actually the first occurrence of this p in the array itself because if you have uh, like initially if your array contained p in this position in a position that was actually leftmost part so suppose like initially this array element was not 0 but p then to change it to 0 what the question said was you have to take all such i such that ai is equal to x and you assign that to 0 so if you have a, if you converted uh, like if you achieve this 0 by converted by converting p to 0 then there cannot be any p in your rightmost part of the array itself so the only condition is that the rightmost part in itself should be non decreasing and each and the first occurrence of each of the element that you are considering in the rightmost part should actually be greater than or equal to this corresponding index i like which is your first index because your none of the uh, 
for none of the array elements their first occurrence can lie in the leftmost part because if it lies in the leftmost part and it is converted to zero then you cannot have that element again in your rightmost part because you are converting all the array elements that are having a value of p to zero so then you cannot have as uh, a, a value p that is converted to zero and a value p that is not converted to zero simultaneously so that's basically the thought process i'll show you the code and that would make it a bit clear so what i do is like i uh, take my input array i take my uh, so i declare a map of int comment and the map would actually contain the first occurrence of uh, the array first occurrence of any element in the array so i take my input vector and if this number is not actually seen till now so this is the first occurrence of this uh, if this is the first occurrence of uh, this array element then i assign my map of ai to contain i and i told you about the worst case answer so the worst case answer is actually the number of distinct elements in the array itself and that is just m dot size and uh, talking about like the minimum uh, array in disks like uh, i told you uh, the minimum first occurrence of the elements that are on the rightmost part should actually be in the uh, rightmost part itself like the none of the minimum occurrence of the first like none of the first occurrence of these element can lie in the leftmost leftmost part itself so for now i maintain the minimum first occurrence of the array element as the first occurrence of the last element itself and if the uh, if the if the first occurrence of last element is the last element itself then i decrement my answer by one so for example what i have is that uh, suppose let's say i have something like this 6 6 5 3 2 and 1 so in this case i can always have this one as a non decreasing part because this is actually my first this is actually the first occurrence of my array element uh, this is actually the first occurrence of this one in my array and i can always convert all these elements to zero and keep this one as the non decreasing part so my answer would be at most the minimum at most the uh, number of distinct elements in the array Minus one because I can always choose the last most element as the non-decreasing array. So if this is the last, if my first occurrence of the last element is the last element itself, then I decrement my answer by one, and I maintain a set taken, and the taken contains all the distinct elements that I will be taking in my rightmost part. So I start iterating from i equal to n minus two to i greater than equal to zero, and I check. whether my non decreasing condition is satisfied till now or not so if my ai would actually be greater than ai plus 1 then the non decreasing condition is violated so for example uh, let's talk about this case so up till 1 2 3 and 4 4 and 5 my non decreasing condition is not violated because uh, sorry so so up till 4 5 and 4 Four, five, six, and this is seven. Okay, so let's say I'm taking my last element as my non-decreasing array. So this I can do because this is actually my first occurrence of this six, and also I can change all of them to be zero, and then I consider this element. So my five and six is actually a non-decreasing array, and I can always convert. the remaining elements to zero because this 5 is actually the first occurrence of this array uh, of this 5 in this array so for example if i had another 5 over here so i can also take this array as my non decreasing array because in this case this again this 5 would be the first occurrence of this 5 in the array itself and uh, this uh, part actually follows my non decreasing array property and if i try to extend my rightmost part by one more element that is if i try to include this 7 in the non decreasing part then this actually violates my non decreasing uh, condition because this 7 is actually greater than 5 so that is what i check i check whether the non decreasing condition is violated till now or not if it is violated so i just break out of the loop and i print my answer 
and if it is not violated i take into account my corresponding uh, value at the position i so i try to i try to include it in my answer uh, so i am not saying i am including it in my answer i am trying to include it in my answer so the thing is i told you you can include it only if the minimum occurrence like the minimum first occurrence of all the elements in the rightmost part actually lies within the rightmost part itself so i i take the minimum first occurrence of uh, the elements seen till now as the minimum of uh, the current minimum or the uh, minimum first occurrence of the current element that i am considering and i check if the minimum first occurrence uh, of the rightmost part elements is i itself so this is uh, the rightmost part that i can see that i can consider so in that case i update my answer to contain answer is equal to minimum of uh, my current answer uh, comma m dot size minus taken dot size and how did i get this expression so m dot size is the number of distinct elements in the total array and taken dot size is the number of distinct elements that i have taken in my rightmost part so the remaining are the number of distinct elements in the left most left most part so for example in this case i can take this 556 in my non decreasing part and in my left most part i have four distinct elements so even if i had uh, one one over here and one two two twos over here so in this case also like i would have three three distinct elements in my right most part so at max i would need three uh, operations to convert all of these to zeros so for example i'll choose my x to be 1 and i replace all the occurrences of ones with zero and similarly i replace all the occurrences of twos with zero and threes with zero and seven with zero so it will take me four operations to convert all of these elements to zero and i can always choose this as my non decreasing part so i try to extend my solution like i try to extend my non decreasing part as much as i can and if i am able to uh, consider that into my answer i update my answer to be current minimum like the minimum of current minimum or the number of distinct elements in the leftmost part so i hope you understood this solution like the implementation it is a bit involved so if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section itself so thank you for this